Yes. Yes. Um, so I'm very happy, even though it snowed like crazy. I'd rather that than the smog. So. Um, so I've, I've got this up here to remind you. There is the first homework is due next, next Wednesday, due at the start of class. So um, but by this time on Wednesday, it should already be handed in to Ian. If it's, it hasn't been handed in by this time on Wednesday, it's late. Um, so, so, um, yep. Don't you mean this Wednesday? Yeah, the, uh, this Wednesday. So it's said that next Wednesday. Ah, yes. Uh, good. Okay, so it's due in two days. So if it's if it's not handed in to Ian by this time, two days from now, um, it's, it's going to count as late. Um, so uh, so as some people have been posting questions on the, on the group, um, and uh, you can change your settings if you think you're getting too much email. You can get to it down here. If if I haven't. So I saw some people's requests got in my spam folder, which I just got to today. Sorry, I was late. If you have it, if you want to get on here so you can post, I think you can. If you're not already part of the group, there's a button you can press to request to be part of the group, and I'll just add you. Um, so, so first, uh, just a note about the group. Um, there's been some discussion on there, which is great. Um, but I, I think people have been a little bit too forward and posting questions. Uh, please, in the future, don't post questions like, here's the answer I got. Is this correct? Um, you can post things like, uh, I'm not sure I'm, I, I'm doing this right. I'm running into this problem and so forth. But don't say, I got this answer. Is, is this correct or not? Um, that's, that's a little bit, it, it, it makes it maybe uh, it's not good for the people who still haven't had to try and work through it themselves. Um, so in the future, I'll try and reprimand people if it happens again, and if it continues to happen, I'll start having to dock points. But at, at this point, I won't do anything like that yet, but just just try not to be so forward with your possible answers. And even if the answers are wrong, that's not good either. Um, so um, uh, the other thing is, if you had questions, um, Yan's office hours were on this morning, so the homeworks will generally be due on Wednesdays, and Yan's office hours are Monday mornings. If this is not an okay time, and you think you'll have questions, then um, you should you should talk to us, and maybe we can see if there's a, another time to have them. But that's when we'll be having office hours, unless we are otherwise. Um, the the other thing that's 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 coming up soon is the um, the project <coughs> proposal is due a week from today. Um, so uh, so you should be starting to think about this. I know some people have talked to me about this already. This is great. What you need for the proposal is not, is not much. Um, um, so, so the proposal should be for every group, um, just one page. It doesn't even have to be one page. A third of a page is fine. You know, don't use small font or anything. Just give me a rough idea of what you're working on. Um, it's better if you chat with me first and get it approved. Um, if 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 it comes in just as the as the document, the proposal, I'll try and give you feedback on these. And if I haven't talked to you already, I'll try and give you feedback on whether this is a good idea or not. If I think it's not going to be a great project, I'll I may tell you to try and resubmit something else. But that's what we're doing it now, so you have time to still still regroup. Um, so and it so it does need to be long, but make sure it has these these uh, these things in it. Who's in the group? Uh, where you're? What you're planning to do about data? You don't have to get it first, but just a general idea that you've thought about this. Um, what is the general thing you're hoping to do with it? The structure you want to mine. That's that can mean lots of things. But just tell me what you want to do with it. Why is this interesting? So. If if you want to, you saw a paper that someone did exactly this, and you want to do exactly that. That's not interesting. But if you want to do a twist on that, or you want to run it on a slightly different days that you think may or may not be different, that could be interesting, right? So just explain to me why are you doing this? That it's it's worth spending time to do this. If just make sure someone else hasn't done exactly the same thing before. But you need to explain that aspect. And then you know this is similar. Four and five should be very correlated with each other. 
kind of, there should be something new about it. It doesn't need to be a brand new algorithm that solves some challenging problem. That's great if you do that, right? But um, there should be some twist over what's done before or some combination of things that you haven't seen before. So, um, and I don't expect you to know all of the literature, so if there is some random paper that no one knows about out there that happens to do what you're doing, that's fine. Um, so, um, so just, you know, it, it, this should be too much, but just to get you thinking um, about this. Yeah. The data that we use, unless we present that data at the plant at the end too, so it can be like verified what algorithms we use, or is that data that maybe if we have like some PHI data or something that we can use this, we don't want to make publicly available? Um, let's see, so there, there, there are kind of two questions. The, the first one is, the next step in this will be, uh, 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 this, this is going to be due about a month later, is the data collection report. And this will tell me about more detail what your data is. Hopefully you have gathered most of it at this point and how you've kind of transformed it or how you're thinking about the structure of the data. So, so this will be the next part. Um, the second question is if the data is somehow private, it's a company's data they're not willing to share. Um, you can talk to me about it and I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, so it, it doesn't need, you can tell me roughly what the data is without giving too much away. And there are lots of times when people who work in companies write, write research papers and they have this problem. They, they don't want to give away customers' data that they're analyzing, but inside the company it's perfectly fine to do that. So they kind of, they can write how well, they can describe generally what the size of the data is, what the structure is, but maybe not even the size. They say it's it's very large, it may be between a million and a hundred million nodes, but they won't even tell you that. Um, so the, the more you can tell me, the better, um, but it, you can't tell me everything that's fine. So we'll figure it out. Um, the, the last thing is, if you're, if you're completely uh, uh, um, kind of confused and bewildered what to do, um, I, imagine, I, I suggest kind of looking through some of these, these links I have here. Maybe the links don't actually work, but you can copy and paste them. And there are lots of cool data sets out there. There, there are plenty more other than these I have here, right? But this is a good place to start. Um, so this one has a lot of good from social network stuff. Um, this is a lot of text from Wikipedia. Um, Google's a lot of these shingles or engrams up here. Um, this is a huge, huge data collection of data sets um, that, that might be good. If you're interested in matrices, this is a great collection of, 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 of matrices to look at. Um, so and there's lots of other stuff on here as well. Um, so th that's a great place to, to, uh, um, to get ideas. Also, I, I realize we haven't covered everything that you could, all the techniques you could use yet. Uh, it's, in, it's impossible to do that ahead of time. Um, so if you're interested in something that you don't, uh, that we haven't covered yet, you should kind of go and glance through it and get a rough idea of, and propose something, and then I will give you feedback as to maybe what specifically to look at. You may need to look a little bit ahead of this on your own to figure out how to use these techniques, but I'll try and point you to a very specific location uh, to, to figure out where that is. So you can work on some part of the class before we, um, before we cover that in more detail. Um, so let's see. Um, so the last thing is, so my office hours are Thursday 11 to noon. Um, I, had, I did some internet hours at the same time, which I don't think anyone signed on for, but uh, just a little bit change. I'm going to require that you, you need to send email to the uh, uudatamining at gmail.com ahead of time so I can put you in a group. Last time I left it open to anyone and I got some weird people come to my internet hours, so I um, think I won't do that again in the future. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to do them. If, I'm guessing there'll be a lot of questions about the proposal topic, so I'm thinking of doing some on Thursday night. Does that, is, is that a convenient time for people? Or um, also, I could do it Thursday during my office hours as well. Um, but you should email me ahead of time or do the uh, Google Plus, whatever, 
to make sure you're in my, in my group ahead of time. Um, or you can send me an email uh, if you have questions about the, the proposal as well. Um, okay. Um, oh, and one last thing for the homework. Um, you don't need to write, um, to write a lot for the solutions. In general, the solution should not be, you know, much longer than the actual homework document itself. So if you get much beyond that, you're probably writing too much. That's a good general guideline. Sometimes it's it's less. People, someone last year had like all its homeworks were turned in on less than a page and got you know very high grades on all of them. So you you don't need to write a lot in order to get good grades. Um, Okay, so any questions about any of this administrative stuff? So last Wednesday we were talking um, we were talking about the Jacquard distance, or or actually the Jacquard similarity. Um, and so this was a similarity uh, um, between two sets. Um, let me just put a for example up here again. Size of these two things, and this was equal to um, zero to five, zero one, two, three, five, six, seven, nine. And this is three over three over eight. The size of this set over the size of this set. So three over eight. Um, so. So if you have two sets, this is something you can compute. Um, <coughs> um, so, but the, the problem is that if you if the sets are large, then this um, might be slow to, to compute, and it's slow to keep around these really large sets. Um, you you may want to do this in um, some other way, um, so, so you can you can approximate this distance or approximate this similarity in some way um, that's faster than actually counting how much is in the intersection of the two sets. So, so we're going to look at the matrix representation, 
of, of sets. And this will be even worse to work with than sets, but it'll allow us to do something called, um, let's think of something called the min hash we can do on the matrix. And um, this will be easier to work with than, than the sets and the matrices themselves. Um, so I guess I'm going to have another example here. Um, So just to be clear, the um, Jacquard um, uh, um, the Jacquard similarity between set set one and set three is is going to be equal to one over three. There's, their section is three, and the union is one two three, right? So now, if we're going to represent this as a as a matrix, we're going to think instead of um, which elements we have in the possible in all the sets. So the only if we look at the union of all of these, we have um, ah, I wanted to do I had five in my notes just so I'm consistent. <coughs> And, and I had this this wrong, right? Okay, so so who knows that this was wrong and didn't um, knows this was wrong and didn't say anything? <laughs> I see some people laughing. Okay, so okay, so what's wrong about this? The Jacquard similarity between Set one and set three. Um, because they both share. No, it should be one over six. Because it's one through five. It's one over six, right? Yeah, one over six. Yeah. One over six. Right. So that they share the two, and there are six things total. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So it should be one over six. Okay. Okay. Good. So. Um, at least someone was paying attention, but unfortunately that was only me. So, um, so okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to represent. Uh, we're going to think of all the elements which are in here. There are one through six are the different elements. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to also write for each of the sets: set one, set two, set three, set four. And so now we're just going to keep a bit um, if there's an, this, the, a, a particular element in the set. So set 1, it, it has a 1 in, so we put a 1 here. It has a 2, we put a 1. But there's no 3, so we put a 0. Um, there's no 4, we put a 0. There's a 5, a 1, no 6. And then just filling out the rest quickly, and then please check if I'm making any mistakes. Uh, right, so is it clear how, how this is, is working? So I put a zero if there, if there's, if the element is not in the set, like one is not in set three, and, uh, and a one if an element is in the set. So, um, so if you have this representation, you can go back into the set representation. So you can go back and forth without losing any information. <coughs> um, the, the problem with, with this, so you can think of this then as a matrix. Uh, and a matrix you would maybe write big, um, this is, uh, um, some big parentheses around the outside of, of these, these columns and so forth. But the problem with this is often um, when you're dealing with this sort of data, 
it's um, mostly um, sparks. So, so who's heard of the term sparse before? So what, so what does sparse mean? A lot of zeros. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, that's right. So it has, has um, the sets do not contain most elements. Yeah. Lots of um, zeros. There isn't actually a real precise definition. Some, some cases you can make it more precise. Some people would say maybe 90% or greater than 90% greater than are zeros. Or, but even this, this is still actually a constant fraction of them are zeros. So your space is blown up by, by a factor 10. But it, 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 could be, it could be worse. If you think you have, if you have um, n sets and m um, elements, then this means that the space is O of n times m. Right? So you have uh, n times m space. Actually, this O is, is not needed. Right? So, so you have O of, o of, or you have n times m space, right? You need to store something whether there's an element or not. Um, but if it's sparse, um, so sparse may have space um, that looks more like O of n plus m. So that means that there's about a constant number in, okay, this is too low. Uh, so sparse could mean um, the space is O of N plus M. Um, th this is maybe too strong. Maybe it's O of N plus M times log of and n times m or something like that, right? But it's uh, but there's much less information than if you had stored it in the in the matrix. And so if you stored it in this in this notation as the set, then you only store elements if they're actually needed, right? Whereas in, in the matrix, you have to store all the zeros even if even if they're not there. There are these sparse matrix notations. Uh, way of doing them, and there's sometimes you can work with them, um, but but often those sparse matrix representations are something like representing them back to sets. Um, so we aren't actually going to work with with the matrices um, th that much, but it's useful to to, to think of them this way um, um, because we can uh, we can think of them. How would we how would we approximate this this matrix, but preserve a lot of the the information in that's that's inside the matrix? Um, so the, so what are some ways to so if you were to approximate this matrix, but you want to have the Jacquard similarity between different sets still be close, how would you do it? Even if you start with the rough idea, well, I'll at least start with one idea which isn't isn't great. So if you get that one, that's a step in the right direction. Uh, when you go through element by element, just make a list of what sets are in each element, assuming you have all the sets sorted. Um. So, so instead yeah. of so, so you're saying instead of storing it as a set for each list. For each element, you could store a set of which you could you could take the kind of take it backwards, right? For each element, figure yeah, I would out just say S1 how many. S4. Well, let's. So so how many sets is, have that element? This is this isn't really an optimum solution, though. This is just something they use. The so if you do this, it'll, it'll it'll compress the space, but it's not going to make it any easier yeah. to actually compute the Jacquard similarity. So we want something that'll actually make it faster to compute the Jacquard similarity as well. Um, and I'm just, I'm just uh, guessing here. It seems like we could do something with matrix multiplication to find some, some sort of similarity between the two. 
So I guess you maybe want to pre-compute the similarity by doing some sort of self-matrix multiplication. Um, so I haven't thought about that. Matrix multiplication is it's actually pretty slow. Um, you usually want, want, to, want to avoid it if you can. Um, so the so, it's, so the, and that's not going to help represent it um, any better. Um, so one um, so one possible idea is to um, think of which of the elements have have the most ones in them and try and keep these elements right. Maybe if we just kept the ones that have the most ones, this these are going to be the most important elements. Does this seem like a like a good idea? Keep most C elements. So let's say uh, four four occurs twice, three occurs twice, and let's say two occurs twice. I guess there's not a lot of difference here, but let's say if maybe these occurred three times and the others occurred once or twice, right? Maybe keeping these would give us a good estimate. You think this will work? I'm going to just give you a... Wouldn't it be more meaningful if you kept the least seen elements? Because if, if you're trying to you know, you know, analyze two documents and you're throwing out essentially all the keywords, all the really right. rare words, then wouldn't it be better to keep the, the rarest elements and do similarities that way? Right, so, so the, the other option is to keep the, um, um, the least seen elements. So, yeah? Uh, well, either one of these alternatives, aren't we taking like the ceiling where we look at everything is much more similar or much less similar than it is? Shouldn't we take like a random sampling? Um, right, so, so then maybe take a, a random set of elements. Um, so both of these are going to have a bias to them. Um, these first two are going to have a bias. Um, so th this will be the most seen elements are going to be like the words the, right, if you just kept which words are in the set. And maybe a lot of documents that uh, you don't usually have the word the. These words may be words that are seen only in one document. And they don't really tell you that much. One of the things you need in Jacquard similarity is what fraction of the you know, you need something to estimate the union, and this will do, uh, may do a pretty, pretty bad job of estimating, uh, estimating the union. Um, so actually, both of these are going to be hard to analyze and, and give you a bias. Um, so the random set of elements, um, so the, the solution we're going to get to is actually going to end up being close to this. Um, so, but it's, it's not exactly a random set of elements, it'll be something a bit more clever. This random set of elements is, is going to be, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't thought about uh, analyzing it. I think there's a reason why it's harder to understand because of you're doing the ratio over the intersection in, in, the, in, the, in the union. Um, this let me illustrate another um, Attempt is we can cluster um, the elements. Um, so, so, and this will work similar to taking a, a random set. So, if you randomly cluster which elements you keep, and you say that um, we're going to have, uh, so we're going to have, uh, so, so, so this will be pretty similar. We're going to do something called. Um, Hash um, 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 something called um, hash clustering, and so we're going to have some random map, which is going to go from this the set of elements one, two, three, um, four, five, six, to and it's going to map them in this. In this uh, respectively to uh, 
So I'm going to pick a. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a a random one of three clusters A, B, or C, and I'm going to take this element to this random cluster. And so then I'm going to say that uh, what happens now is that set one is going to have elements uh, one, two, and five, and these map to A, B, and A. So it's going to have elements A and B. S2 is going to have just element three, three maps to B. S3 has elements, uh, let's see, 2, 3, 4, and 6, so B, B, C, and A. Uh, so you only keep P1s, B, C, and A, so it's got everything, and S4, it's got 1, 1, 4, and 6, so that's A, C, and A. So that's just A and C. Let's see if it matches my notes. And so now we can get another representation of this, which will be smaller. Um, a, B, and C. So I've, I've done this on a small example, but you can imagine if, if you have many more um, of these, this can be even more compression. Um, and then, let's see, this is one. Uh, let's see, it's got one, one, and zero. Set two is uh, zero, one, zero, one, 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 and one, zero, one. Um, so now if we, if we do a calculation, let's see, we had S, we had the Jacquard, Similarity was one was one six before uh, for sets one and three. So if you do it with the cluster, we now have S one and S three is going to be equal to uh, two thirds. So that looks like not not a great approximation. Um, if, if you if you look at these on on average. Let me just make a, a chart. Um, and then you have the uh, hard similarity and the cluster. Let's see, the values were 0, 2, 6. something wrong here, right? It should be one, six, right? Um, and then if I did it with the, with the clusters, please look for errors here. So it's, it's kind of doing, it's kind of doing close, but it's kind of, it's, um, also it's not predictable. Um, it, it seems like the value is always increasing when I do this. Um, so you have the property that if elements, if the two sets had an intersection somewhere, they still have the intersection afterwards, right? If, if they have, so if you look at sets one and three, before they had two was intersecting and two mapped to, uh, mapped to B in both sets, so they still have the same intersection. Um, but, the, but the size of the union possibly has, has gone down. The size of the intersection has also possibly gone down because you can have two things mapped to the same cluster, and so two intersections may now only be one intersection. So it's so you've got some compression, but it's kind of unpredictable how much um, if you're going to have the error increase or decrease. It'll generally increase, but 
there are situations where the error can also decrease. Um, so, so this technique is 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 a uh, um, is it's not going to be that useful. Um, and I haven't. I'm curious now, I'll think about this after class, but I'm not sure what taking a random subset will do, but I think you'll get some similar patterns here as well, where you're not sure if it'll always increase or decrease or what the, what, what the relationship will be with respect to, um, um, with respect to the, this, with, with respect to the MG card similarity. One of the issues with the random sampling of, of elements is that often the jacquard similarity in these sets, like with documents, is really small. It's a very small fraction of all of the elements. There's actually, there's usually a huge number of elements, and any one set does not have a lot of them. So if you just randomly sample them, you may more likely miss, um, maybe miss all the elements in the set. So it looks like the jacquard similarity is zero with everything. Um, where it's you know it's it really has elements in it and it's it's not zero, so so that's one of the issues with random sampling. Um, okay, so is it, is it clear what the hash clustering did? Yeah. Uh, how did you come up with that method? So I picked I picked a random. So I, I decided I was going to have three clusters, and I picked a random cluster for each element of that, and and so this will be. For every set, the, the mapping is the same. It's a fixed map once I picked it. But I picked these at random. So this was at, um, at random. Um, yeah. Like I said, there will be a bad if we uh, class the Sabia items to add them to us. Yeah, so if we could figure out which ones are more similar, then, then this might actually work. And actually, it, it makes sense maybe from a modeling point of view that if you thought, like if you're stemming words, right? Like uh, egg and eggs, right? Maybe you want to cluster those together as it's the same elements. So you would probably do this in a pre-processing as the modeling uh, by some stemming or some other technique. Um, but you still may have a huge number of elements that you don't want to keep track of. So if you look at all the words in the dictionary, I don't know how many words are in the English language, maybe 